Okay, so we've got our main level existing conditions plan completely knocked out. To wrap up this contract, we gotta go and get the basement done too. Now, what I'm wondering is if there's any pieces that we can just kind of copy from upstairs and then paste downstairs so that we don't have to completely redraw that existing conditions plan. That's what we're gonna do. And also I'm gonna show you a little trick in layout to open your SketchUp model references directly from layout to create a live scene. So we're gonna do that first and then get this thing knocked out so we can send the invoice and move on. Let's get to it. All right, so inside of layout, here is my main level existing conditions plan. And if I go to the previous page, this is gonna be our basement plan. First thing I'm noticing here about the basement plan is we're having that same issue. The windows are not showing up. I'm gonna to go to the file document setup and go to my references tab. When I select my SketchUp model reference, I can click on edit. What that does is it opens the SketchUp model directly from layout. It creates like a live sync. So let's go look for our floor plan OO and then go to our view drop down and choose section plane. Here's my active section cut and now I can just move it up and you can see I just want to like move it enough So that I'm grabbing all those windows and so it would appear that like maybe 28 inches is just right because I only moved my active section cut I didn't modify which cut is active. I don't need to update my scene now when I go check my CAD floor plan OO everything is showing as I want it to I'm gonna go to the file drop down and choose save and here's where the magic happens I'll hop back into layout and and then automatically everything updates and re-renders. That is the advantage of opening your SketchUp models from layout. So when you open your SketchUp models from layout, you create a live sync. I'm telling you, this saves a ton of time. So instead of opening SketchUp, opening your model, opening layout, opening your presentation, work on your model, save, file document setup, references reload over and over again, just open layout and go to file document setup references, open your SketchUp model from layout to create that live scene. We've got our uh, windows showing up now. Let's uh, hop upstairs to the main level and see what we can copy and paste over to save a little bit of time. All right, so back to the main level and, you know, again, hopping back and forth, you can see there's a couple windows along the top. Uh, there's these two windows down low. It looks like the basement windows are just a little smaller than the upstairs windows. All looks good. So I'm just gonna double click in, grab, uh, you know, a couple of these and a couple of these like that and like this and this. I think I can just kind of grab the walls and then we'll just kind of stretch them around. So like, Maybe we'll do something like that. Just kind of keeping these. We might have to delete some stuff, that's okay. I also want to take this wall and I'm gonna copy them. So now we'll hop back over onto our basement level and paste. Whenever you paste in layout, it's always a paste in place. When I double click into this group, I'm gonna select all these guys and we're gonna knock down the fill, the opacity of the fill so that I can kind of see through and see what I'm working on. So now I'm just gonna go around and this is where the question lies is like, is is it faster to just redraw this thing or is it faster to kind of salvage parts from upstairs, redraw or stretch them around and edit? I argue the latter is better that like pulling a few pieces from upstairs and pasting them downstairs is gonna save us some time. But I don't know, I suppose you could probably make the argument either way. And then we'll use some of those same uh, tactics and techniques like that and stretch this guy up all the way to the end. There we go. I'm not worried about, I don't need to show the, these doors. I got that window, got that window. We don't have windows here, so I can stretch this guy down like that and then stretch this down. I think I mentioned before, I do like that shift nudge and then I'll stretch this back up. These guys are gonna close in like that and like that. This will come out just a little bit. Uh, I was kind of double checking some of these, uh, the reality check on these windows and they, they are kind of wonky. Like they're, they're not quite aligned with above and they, they are smaller. All right, so this will come up like that. And this guy will come across here. This is where the front porch is. So there are no windows there. All right, so we've got all of our exterior walls in place. And I suppose at this point, I'm gonna work on my interior walls. Maybe I'll just like grab one wall like this and one wall like that, copy it. We'll double click in here and paste it. I'll tap S 
and soak up the properties of that so that I can continue to see through my walls. And let's just work on our interior walls now. Transform your SketchUp experience with the Condoc tools, the ultimate extension for professionals. Whether you're an interior designer, architect, or woodworker, Condoc tools simplifies 3D model organization and turns complex designs into professional 2D drawings effortlessly. With our system, tedious tasks are automated, ensuring you meet professional standards with just a few clicks. Compatible with SketchUp Pro 2023 for both Windows and Mac, Contact Tools keeps you ahead with continuous updates for peak performance. Unlock the full potential of SketchUp and transform your ideas into precise, professional drawings with ease. Click the link in the description to learn more and start your seven-day trial with Contact Tools today. Okay, so we've got all of our interior and exterior walls in place. So I'm gonna double click in there, select all, and make sure that my fill swatch is active with that little dark line around it. And then I'll just click on this black swatch and get them back to good like that. Also, you know, you can always just turn off your backgrounds, kind of double check like your progress, turn them off, see what's missing, turn them on, and that kind of shows you what needs to be drafted. Let's hop back over to the main level plan and I'm gonna grab maybe just a few windows. Like I'll, I'll grab these two windows like that. These two here, like this one and this one, copy, back out of here, hop back to the main level, basement level, paste in place, and then we can kind of scoot these guys around. This one still has a scale. I'm gonna right click on it, choose remove scale. And that way I can stretch it around. I'm going to select both of these. And with that fill active, I'm going to knock the opacity down so that using that same technique, I can see through them and I can just scoot them around and do my drafting like this. All right, like that, you know, same drill, just kind of scoot around here and get this thing done. So then we'll rotate this window and snap it into place and stretch it a bit to scale it down. And then we'll make another copy of it and again, snap it into place. I'm gonna turn off my backgrounds for this. I'm getting all those extra snaps in there and just make sure that like I'm getting my widths perfect. That's gonna kind of help for this particular task. Go in, rotate this window, that, hold control, make a copy. So we'll make another copy of this window and snap it into place just like we've been doing. And of course, down low, same deal. Go back here, turn on my backgrounds. We've got all of our windows in place. Let's go grab some doors and see if we can uh, take a few steps ahead with those. We'll copy, oh, this one, this one, this one, and maybe even I'll copy the bathroom arrangement as well. Copy, and then we're gonna hop back downstairs and then paste. Let's see what we need. So these two, we can right click and choose flip top to bottom like that. Scoop my precise move that, and then maybe just nudge this into place. That looks pretty good there. This door would likely go right there and I'm going to scale it back down like that. I don't think I quite got the snap the way I wanted it to. Yeah, like that. The SketchUp 3D Summit is a once in a lifetime opportunity to elevate your design skills, connect with the best, and have a blast doing it. We're talking live mind-blowing presentations from six of the top SketchUp experts, authors, and extension developers. First class workshops by day, unforgettable networking events by night. Gear up for your journey to the peak of your professional SketchUp workflow. Join me at the SketchUp 3D Summit in Denver this summer. Click the link in the description to learn more and grab your seat today. I'll see you there. Sometimes you just know you didn't get it. Copy that, flip top to bottom like that, and then scoot that into place, double click, select it, scale it to that point. I don't see any need for these kind of smaller doors. So we're gonna get rid of that. And I'll take this guy, make a copy of it all the way to the end here. You can also hit enter to jump into groups in layout. Make sure you kind of hover and get that snap. One more door, uh, two more doors. So we'll make a copy of this down here, right click and choose flip top to bottom, slide that into place. And then we can rotate this by 90. I believe it needed, that would make sense that it goes that way and then double click in and then I'll hold shift, again, snapping to there. So that's looking pretty good. These are not actually closet doors. They were curtains, but I think I'm gonna treat them as closet doors. So I'll just copy this symbol that I've already got. Made a page, let's get rid of that. We'll just kind of rotate 
like that. And then I'm gonna just slide this into place. That looks pretty good there. That, copy it over to here, stretch that into place, copy it over to here. That looks pretty good. And then, yeah, it looks like all these guys maybe need to nudge up. The nudge, the just a simple arrow nudge, I believe is a 64th of an inch. The shift nudge is a quarter. I use those all the time though. That'll just give the indication that that's a closet. I think that's better than trying to represent a curtain. I guess I could go either way on that. So we're in good shape there. We've got all of our doors. Let's turn off our backgrounds again, just to check. It looks like the things that are lacking here are our stairs and our shower. So let's go back to our scrapbooks. And again, this is our uh, Connock 2D. And here you can see we're towards the end here with our showers. I'll grab this uh, shower, throw it in there, rotate it by 90, and then drop it into place here like that. I wanna double click in and I don't wanna stretch everything because I'll distort my circle and my triangle. What I could do is just kind of grab all of this stuff and then I can stretch this stuff together like this and then like this. And then I can like nudge this back into place, you know, something like that. And then snap the circle back into place for the drain. Because otherwise I would have, if I would have scaled this all together, it would have distorted my circle. I don't want to do that. Our shower is good. And then uh, these are our tables, washer, dryer, and a sink. So maybe I'll just grab like a washer and a dryer like that. I don't believe I have like a utility sink. So we'll just grab this sink like that, throw it in there, and I'll double click in and hide the rest of my model. And then I'm gonna offset this piece here like that, and then stretch it up here like that. Pretty easy just to kind of work any of these different elements or symbols into something else that you need. Here we've got hot water and a furnace. So we've got symbols for those. There's our hot water, and here's our furnace like that. I'm not concerned about, you know, all this piping and everything. It's cool that that, that comes in with our scan, but I really don't need to represent that. And then I'd say the last thing we've got going on is our stairs. We're gonna grab these pieces from upstairs and then paste them. And then I'm gonna turn off my backgrounds layer like that. And then we're gonna make a copy of this and maybe what, six times, seven times? So remember, you can always change the number of copies. You just type it in. You don't have to start that command over. Turning my backgrounds on again, perhaps I would draw a rectangle and sample like the line weight from my dryer. This is like a fireplace here. So, you know, maybe I'll do something like that. I think that's pretty much it for downstairs. Let me turn off the backgrounds go to file and choose save just to be sure. Nah, yeah, we'll leave, leave them where they are. You know, that's, that's the location. That is the existing conditions as they stand today. If you want to get this thing fully finished here, uh, we've got level one and two, file, export, PDF, and kick this out into my 4750 Oak Street. Technically, today being the sixth, I would go with a new folder, 231206, and then double click in there, and let's just call this existing conditions like that. All uh, pages, JPEG compression's fine, and we'll show that export. And so now we are good to go. This would be, uh, you know, you just print this and you can start sketching and designing. Canvas paired with the Conduct Tools extension and 2D scrapbooks is the fastest and easiest way to generate accurate and beautiful existing conditions drawings. In my opinion, there's no better system for architects and interior designers. Grab a seven day trial at condoctools.com. And if you really wanna dig in and master this workflow, join me at our SketchUp 3D Summit event this summer. Three days, six of the top SketchUp experts, authors, and extension developers all in one room. There's only 14 seats, so sign up now. Or Check out my latest upload here. You're gonna love it. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. And if this helps, please do hit that like button and drop a comment before you leave. I'll see you next time.